Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Embark on a journey to claim new spiritual territories. In Taking Over Territories, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals strategies for expanding God's kingdom. Learn how to navigate spiritual landscapes with divine guidance and wisdom. Empower yourself to break through limitations and establish God's presence in every area of life. Step into your destiny and transform the world around you, equipping you to take over and transform territories. Certificate. You keep printing pieces of papers that recycle pain around your life. Let the forces bow and you will see how cheap life can be. I tell you sincerely, there are forces that must bow. In ministry, you see a lot of innocent, sincere, wonderful men of God. They love God with all their heart. You listen to their message and you are like, my God. And their voices can never be heard. Listen to me. You must trust God for the grace that subdues territories by understanding the warfare dimension. It's not just random careless prayer and exact spiritual legislature with intelligence. You pave the way and write triumphantly in the day. You come out and people say, ah, what is all this? Why are you rising like this? But it's not fair. Apostle people don't like me I don't know why I know why There are forces There are forces There are forces I desired once again to come to you But Satan hindered us Your favor desired once again to come But Satan hindered us Psalm 66 verse 3 There is a, a dimension The warfare dimension I, When I say warfare I understand it's been abused here and there People say all kinds of things In the name of warfare Psalm 66 and verse 3 Say unto God How terrible art thou in thy ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you Listen the nation of Israel in Egypt is a lesson we must learn. Pharaoh was only a figurehead. Watch this. Do you know that everywhere the plague struck was a mystery because they were controlling powers? But let me choose one of them. The Bible says, do you know how the sea became blood? Let me tell you. Look up. The Bible says that Moses stretched forth his rod. Watch this. And the fish of the sea died. Not fishes. The fish, one fish died. And his blood turned a whole Nile to become red. Is that a fish? The Nile. People have, people have died in ships. And their blood together could not make the Nile red. But one fish, one goes down and the river becomes red. My brothers and my sisters, this world is more than what we see. It's more than what your news tells you. Champions are also warriors. Champions are fighters. Champions are winners. Champions are men who know how to stand upon their watch like Habakkuk. Someone needs to stop giving excuses. 
this night and stand up and say no whatever grace was upon pastor shola in this house i receive it it's time to shake up this nonsense otherwise you will sit forever and no job will come ah, my uncle said i'm just waiting for my uncle to come back from brazil he's been slow you will be disappointed except those spirits are not there let me tell you this god is called the father of spirits it's because you have pegged your miracle to an uncle let god choose the actors you manage the spirits that things must shift things must change number two let's end the time is gone the power of faith the second way we possess territories by the power of faith Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 who through faith subdued kingdoms who through faith subdued kingdoms please back down to verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says but without faith please look up it is impossible to please him because whoever comes to God your first assignment is to convince yourself that God is alive your first assignment is to convince yourself that he is that he exists and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him let me tell you this faith is powerful faith is not a christian theology faith is a technology it's a system of transporting spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit let me define faith for you it is the name of the action you take based on the conviction you have over who god is and the integrity of his word but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded faith is the name of that conviction there is no guarantee anywhere in life please hear me nobody is going to allow you to just walk on a padded ground with roses all around that's a dream it is faith that will make that way you see when god talks to men he talks to men like he's talking to himself he does not talk to men like he's talking to men so god can say pastor shola please go and get the place and that's it where will the money come from where will the negotiation come from and while he's saying that the owner of the property can vow and say go over my dead body see, let me get used to the pride of men let it stop surprising you get used to the pride of men men are arrogant people they will talk like god but they are not god give yourself lack of sleep because a man vowed as long as i'm in this office you will not rise God in the beginning God in the beginning of anything God John said um, how did he put it John chapter 1 verse 1 help me was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he said it was with God in the beginning and through him were all things made without him meaning you dissociate from with yourself from him nothing will be made that was made and a man sits down in his office a man that was once a baby in the hand of a woman one day now grows to become some years old and sits on some money and makes noise that ask Nebuchadnezzar what God did to him God is still a jealous God oh the jealousy of God is like the jealousy of a woman stay clear because it's dangerous Elijah threatened the king and Jezebel carried her jealousy and said Elijah you threatened my husband let me show you what a jealous wife can do I will take your head the prophet had to run away not pray the prophet never fought Jezebel he fought prophets but ran away from Jezebel it is in that similitude that he says God is a jealous God who is that taking my place and speaking like me 
and it's not me. There is nothing that God says to give you that cannot enter your hands. Listen, there is nowhere God said He can take you to. No. You see, let me tell you sincerely. Thank God for this place, but this is not all of it. You hear what I tell you by the Spirit. Thank God for this place, oh, but this is not all of it. When you see this place in its glory, alongside the allocations of the space that God gives, you will know that this one is the finger of God. He is the God that doeth wonders. Faith. Faith, the substance, the tangibility of the things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. He says, for by it elders obtain good reports. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Please shake away unbelief in your life. If God said it, it is within his power to do it. Your assignment is to agree. Lord, I agree. Lord, I believe. Show me my role in that equation. There is no mountain that cannot go down. Mountains are relative. Let your faith deflate it. Please, I'm challenging you tonight. There is nowhere. There is nothing that God cannot give you. Whatever God tells me, I say, yes, sir. Let's go. Mm, I like Joshua. Let us go up at once. At once. Caleb, let us go up at once. They said we were like grasshoppers. The people did not send them. They didn't say, go and tell Moses you are grasshoppers. They prophesied to themselves. We were like grasshoppers. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, if your faith says yes, God will not say no. It is true. I believe God. I believe God. We subdue kingdoms by faith. Not by budget. We subdue kingdoms by faith. We obtain properties by faith. You sit down calculating budgets. You will calculate the equivalent of your lifetime. You will need faith. You want to build a house. And you are just trying to just. I'm not saying you should not save. But you are joking. How much is one block? Psalm 44 verse 3. Please give it to us. Let me show you how we possess territories in the kingdom. Read it please. One to read. By their own swords, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. It is true. It is true. We possess things that way. Pastor, this is why many young men are depressed. The cost of living in the flesh is too expensive for any human being to try it. It's too expensive. How much does it take to marry? How much does it take to have a house? How much does it take to have to manage a child nine months later? Then two years later, it will kill you by ten years. So you see depressed people talking to themselves all around the street. Fifty plus seventy. Ah, no, no, no. I remove five thousand. Ah. And I said, sorry, it's not, a, it's not a wise way to live. I know whom I have believed. God is too honorable to dishonor me on earth. He loves me. He's jealous. He protects me. You have to believe that about God. When you come to God, believe that He exists. God is not a, God is not a, a president of a country. He is the God Almighty. That's why spending time with God is very important. It will spiritualize your understanding. Sometimes this nonsense we continue listening to is what dampens our faith. On your way to the office, a ghastly motor accident. In your office, the threat of downsizing. You get to the market, the price of things. You get to the Babylon saloon, you are listening to someone singing that the world is going bad. You hear those things, by the time you get back home, you are almost dead. So you create your own atmosphere for the sake of your destiny. You refuse. I choose God. 
I choose victory I choose my perspective about the world it's a choice I refuse to bend a reporter cannot manipulate my understanding I honor him as a newscaster and has a newscaster but no there is a God in heaven there is a God in heaven I feel sorry about the plane crash that happened somewhere around the world but I still believe that I remain above. I feel sorry about the tragedy happening, the plagues here and there. I feel sad and I'm sympathetic to them but that's not enough to manipulate my consciousness that God is alive, He is mighty. They did not say a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side. He didn't ask me to laugh at those falling but did he didn't ask me to stop trusting Him either. I trust Him. We're about to pray I came tonight to shake your faith territories are not gotten by luck your influence does not multiply just by desire there are forces and your faith must be released today we stand here to celebrate a man and his dear wife and a group of people who have believed God and the results show you see the end of faith is a real result there may be waiting but it is not for a lifetime if it's for a lifetime it was not fate someone came here tonight to be inspired while you watch pastor nathaniel minister you sat down there in the congregation and said lord but you also told me that my voice will go to the nations wishing is not the way you get it asking people to sing your songs is not the way you get it you you clear the powers Lord you told me just like Pastor Shola that I will rise to become a great man of God why is it that people do not want to hear me the spirits in Gadara say we can leave the man but spare us the territory notice that the first sets of people to be affected when the spirit went away was the finance the business people they entered peaks and the people lost immediately and when they lost they said leave leave you are causing that means it was the same spirit that empowered the economy of the place No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't coming after me. No wall, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. someone's hands around you and I like us to pray you are going to declare the Bible says declare ye that ye might test be justified you are going to declare that it's a new season and no force lift your voice and pray make decrees in the realm of the spirit is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of by you I can run over a troop by you I can leap over a wall my influence remains multiplied no going down in the name of Jesus is someone praying Grace for territory. Grace for territory. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. That in the name of Jesus, that every name that is not of Christ, 
and every ordinance that is not of the Christ that attempts to wrestle prophecy in my life I war a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given to me lift your voice and dislodge every power every installation of hell over your ministry over your destiny I stand upon my feet and I make decree in the name of Jesus. I speak over the spiritual climate of my destiny. Hear the word of the Lord. I break through obstacles. I break through controlling power. I declare the heavens are open. 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 Over your business. Pray. Over your ministry. Pray. Over your children. No tragedies. No coincidences that bring trouble. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest he dip his hands in iniquity. Household of David, pray. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Listen. Years ago, the Lord opened my eyes to see something that then I didn't hear it was not something that was shared did you know the first person God called was not Abraham it was his father Abraham was not called by God God called his father it was the failure of his father that transferred the mandate the same way the failure of David transferred the mandate to Solomon He says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. See, I'd like you to declare, I've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation and every ordinance that is not of the Christ. I, dis I dissociate myself from the ordinances of the past. I dissociate myself by the blood of the eternal covenant. I decree and declare, I may be an evil man. But in the name of Jesus, the power of territory will not affect me. I may be a Yoruba man, but the power of territory will not affect me. I may be a northerner. I may be from whatever part of the nation. I've been called out, called out, called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Abuja for a meeting on Wednesday, Thursday. It's been a busy schedule for me, truly busy all through this year, really. But I was praying for a woman, Pastor. Now, I, I by the privilege of God's grace, I pray for people with you know all kinds of issues. They believe that when I pray for them, things will change. And this woman came to me pregnant. And she said, Apostle, this is one year. I said, so why have you not given birth? She said, well, this kind of pregnancy is the day you have money that you give birth. Because she said the baby was not, the baby didn't grow in the fallopian tube. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Outside of where the baby should grow. And it will cost quite some amount. The cheapest hospital in Abuja that would do that would charge you know in the millions and so she didn't have the money and the baby's destiny must remain there one year and that baby is not out because there was no resource was it not because one baby was born that other babies died one Moses is born thousands die Jesus is born thousands die seen the attack of darkness in my life I didn't have the privilege that many of you have today 
I know what victory is. I know what it is to win. That's why I don't take victory lightly. Many of you have enjoyed covenants that have bailed you out of things and shielded you from the reality of what life is about. But I can tell you this. I didn't come from that background. It's been... That you have to stand on the truth. I learn scripture not because of a desire to preach, but a desire to live. Please listen to me. Forces are real. I have watched them rubbish people. I will never forget, I apologize, I'm rounding up. I will never forget a man of God, sir. He came to me, very wonderful man of God, and as soon as he came in, I just saw a black figure just come with him. And the man stood and said, Ah, you are the apostle. I said, Yes, sir. Okay, I was going to counsel him. And when he shared with me his challenge, I said, Sir, I don't know if you will believe this, but I want to pray for you because I see a hindrance in your life and I see that this is demonic. And the man just shut me down. He said, Please. Get away with all those things. I don't believe all that. I said, wow. Well. I said, okay, I respect you. I honor you. I believe in the body of Christ. I've read my Bible thoroughly. I know the boundaries of error. But I also know the boundaries of ignorance. And I told him, something is wrong with you. And he said, well, I should just pray for him. I said, okay, just allow me to pray for you. And then you can go. I barely lifted my hands. When the man started shaking and rolling and coughing and doing all kinds of things, he got up after 10 15 minutes. This man was embarrassed. For three days, he was not himself. He said, What have I learned? What is this? Respectfully, I'm called to the body of Christ. But I can tell you this, Pastor, there is a blindfolding. Deception that is eating the destinies of men that just like that everything will work out in their lives my brothers and my sisters please hear me even your salvation did not happen just like that at the expense of your going to hell you were still allowed to make a decision every other thing in your life will not happen automatically I was a preacher for many years ministering to people and I was still oppressed by demons I had read the books believe me I'm a student of history I read the books am I boring you this night I apologize that you are standing why would I minister so much under the anointing and I go back and for me you've heard my story I'm saying this to comfort you so that you go back and get balance to truth. This is why I love this ministry. There are many truths in the kingdom that are, they are uncomfortable but they are true. Just create space for them in your heart. Because ignorance is costly in this kingdom. I, because of my prophetic inclination, I would see these spirits. Pastor, the first shock. I mean, I fasted, I prayed. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not a rebel. I'm not too proud to admit what I don't know. I shouted Jesus. I prayed. The spirits did not even look at me. They just passed as if I was not talking to them. How can I call the name of Jesus? How can I declare in Jesus' name, I'm a child of God. And while I'm chanting that thing, that I know... <laughs> The same way you said Jesus over the unemployment and it did not change. The same way you said Jesus over the tragedy and what they said would happen still happened. When the obvious does not happen, there is something you are not seeing. Now I know why. I would argue in my arrogance those days, but now I know what was wrong. prayed and prayed they would come and oppress me I could hear people talk but I could not wake up and yet there are invitations on my table see you have to be honest sometimes with yourself 
The same way many of us have all kinds of issues we are just hiding quietly. No, don't assume away tragedy. Deal with it until victory is established. Hallelujah. I made up my mind. The day light came, I ran. Ran to my room then. I stood. And I said, Satan, I found the light. I will not cast you. You are invited. This man has not honored my invitation till tomorrow. Don't assume light. Get light. Don't assume light. Get light. I will not leave the ministry to chance. I would not leave my destiny to chance. Don't leave your children to chance. Assuming everything is alright. Laughing at people when they stand to engage the truths of God's word. Because it will only be a matter of time. Life will bring you down in a way that will surprise you. Even Jesus was about to give up. And he said, no, nevertheless not my will. But yours be done. Isaac laughed at Abraham until his wife refused to give birth. Jacob laughed at Isaac until he was surprised. Victory is certain, but not automatic. The truths are established prophetically. It will take understanding and the application of spiritual intelligence alongside your faith to make it your reality. Are we blessed tonight? Yes. And so, while we prepare for the other parts of this conference, please go back home tonight with the sound of worship, with the wonder that God has done in this place. And I want you, please, don't just come for a program just because of the ritual. No. A program reveals you to you. Go back with God and say, God, this is it. What is wrong with my life? I'm not, I cannot continue to go one meeting after the other, clapping for people who are rising. When is my turn? He says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. I came with a sincere desire not to preach, but to see us rise, even as we celebrate with our dear man of God. Return back and insist that results be produced in your life. Don't assume it. Get it. Father, we thank you tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Father, I pray tonight that this word that has come will challenge your people to go back and confront status quo. It will challenge your people to go back and confront the workings of darkness. I pray that this teaching tonight will plant dissatisfaction in your people. That they will go back and study the word for themselves. That the gray areas in our lives that have refused to answer will be corrected from this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.